Look at those guys. Police. The police? Yeah. In the third video of my multi-part video series in the most dangerous country on earth, I visit several rural areas outside of Port-au-Prince, away from the rampant violence within the city. We see a very strange voodoo ceremony. Okay. And Sean gets spit on by farm animals. They like how they spit on me. <laughs> <laughs> the tire just fell off. Oh he's boy. done, he's done. Now they will need a man to help them. They won't be able to do it. <laughs> you said you can't stop in this area? No, no. There's a gang area, so you don't stop. You just drive through. It's like a war zone, and nothing is happening in this area. They feel more comfortable living in the countryside than bang in that area where there is constantly gang fight and political turmoil. The unsafe situations have expanded outside of downtown and they're moving to the, the more rural areas like up here yes exactly okay. and the security which is right downtown area is starting to climb up to the mountain is he going to see something again or does he <laughs> no we got this this area is called for jacques all those clothing you see hanging here are all second hand clothing from uh, the US, Canada, and France, and they are they're selling it. With that, they are able to pay the school tuition for the kids, uh -huh. uh, food, and so on. With the money that they send to their family members here in Haiti to help them. So they help a lot in the Haitian economy. The <laughs> tire just fell off. He's oh, done, he's done. He can't go nowhere anymore. Oh, look at that. Oh my god, I can't believe he's driving with that. What from? What you can't say that, eh? Uh, now they will need a man to help them. They won't be able to do it. <laughs> this is a bustling market here, look at this. Oh, yeah. Wow, look at it. <laughs> so are these markets, are they open seven days a week or is it just for certain hours? No, the, uh, this market here at uh, Chrissy, I think they open four times a week. Okay. Yeah, four days a week, sorry. Four days a week? Yeah. We got to pay them a little bit? No, no. When you're up in the, up there, you have a little bit of what you call café noir. It keep you warm. Oh. <laughs> café, café, café du soir. It keep you warm. It's coffee and Haitian, um, uh, they put wood in it and yeah. leaves. Yeah. Yeah. To keep your body warm. Oh, so you going to get one right now? Yes. Yes. You don't want to You have You got a little bit of alcohol in it. You have coffee in it. I definitely need to try it. And leaf. <laughs> you want to try it? Oh. It's strong, huh? You want to try it? It's not a little bit alcohol. <laughs> it's really, real alcohol. No. You want to try it? Oh. <laughs> Are you gonna spill that? Just drink it here. No, it's not going to. <laughs> yeah, gonna... Okay. Quite the view. Can you stop hey. for a moment? Oh yes, we can. Oh, let me stop. Who are those guys? Police. The police? Yeah. Why are they doing all the way up here? Oh, those police are the ones in charge of the uh, forest. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Bisap. They call him Bisap. Bisap, okay. They are uh, like, we are in the forest, you don't think that they are there, they're there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, world, wake me up to another good, good morning, time to go. Got that smile upon my face, cause there's excitement in the chase, this I know. Yeah, I'm going for the ride And by myself I am alive And I saw Oh my god, the goats! The goats! Ah! Oh, that's a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go down to the ecologic garden and on the way back it may Maybe. be clear out. Yeah. Maybe. So, okay. Will the most beautiful view. Yes, of the fog. Yeah. The fog. <laughs> no, no, not the fog, but actually the mountains. Yeah. 
This is a very precarious road here. Oh, don't worry. You got a good driver with you. <laughs> how, how did you name this uh, road? I said precarious. Precarious? Uh, like, uh... uh it's a new word for me. Be precarious ready. is like, uh, it's like similar to unstable. Yeah. yeah. You see a lot of beautiful housing that the people, the rich people are starting to build up here. Yeah. Quite beautiful, look at that. So you can see why the uh, indigenous call Haiti uh, that name. Uh, Haiti, Haiti which means mountainous country and splendid. Oh. So Haiti is filled with mountains and valleys. Look at that. It's a nice beautiful house just starting to build. Hopefully it will be a nightclub and I can come up. Do <laughs> <laughs> you know how much it would cost to build something like that? Like a, uh, a house like that? Yeah. If you buy it, it will probably cost you a good uh, a good twenty thousand. USD? Yep. Only? Mm-hmm. Twenty thousand USD it to buy that? Cost, it could cost that, yep. Yes, like no to problem. Like to buy it? It's to buy it, yeah. Yes. Money. Oh, there's no property so taxes. There's no property taxes. Oh, because taxes. there is no government. There is a government, but there is no property taxes. Once you buy the property, the property is all yours. Okay. And you don't have, you don't owe the government on the property. Oh, that's you really owe nice. the government on the house. Once the house is completely finished, and that's when you start paying uh, government tax. Oh, you do? House. Okay. Like, uh, you can live in the house for 20 years and never paint outside of your house. So I won't have to pay the government. As soon as you, so as soon as you paint it? Once I paint it, it's, it's done. Interesting. So I can paint inside of my house and never paint outside. Wow. So I don't have to pay the government. I wish we had a law like that. <laughs> so for the last like hour and a half or so, Sean has driven us up these very windy and precarious mountain roads up to this ecological garden. I must say the area up here is quite different from downtown Port-au-Prince. They have these beautiful, lush, very nice hillsides here. And it seems like a lot of the oligarchs build all their properties and houses up here. But check out this view from up here. So down there is Port-au-Prince. And all of these areas in here are the kind of outlying rural areas that we drove past when we came up in here. I am very quickly finding out after spending uh, now a day and a half with Sean that if you come to Haiti, specifically Port-au-Prince, you absolutely 100% need a guide or some sort of local to help you get around. Time to go? Yeah. We got a quick visit. They closed, but I had to ask them to open for us. Oh, you're the man. <laughs> <laughs> they can't do that to me. Oh, my friend is waiting for me. Come in, where's our This dog, you about to run him over. What is he doing? <laughs> You're a crazy man, doggy. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Sitting atop winding mountain roads at 6,000 feet above sea level, overlooking Port-au-Prince, lies Wind Farm, one of the few remaining areas of the country seemingly untouched by the regular violence and insecurities that plague the city just below. A small but well-kept piece of land, this ecological reserve of 30 acres, burns a bright light in a nation that has always seen dark times. Wind Farm is a reserve ecologique that started in 1956. It was started by Victor Wayne, uh, who was an American, and he was a geologic, geologist. Yeah. Geologist? Yeah. Someone who studies rocks? He helped the farmers uh, with in the farms also helped them to um, plant more trees and to preserve the soil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are vegetables that we are growing. Uh, we don't grow them in great quantity, but uh, this is sort of a demonstration on how we are growing our crops here. I like how they like the spit on me. Oh, Come. <laughs> yeah. well, how does the male look more beautiful than the female? I must say, this is inside of Haiti that I was never expecting to see. I thought it was just endless violence and corruption and slums and gang violence and not good <laughs> neighborhoods, but I think that is the best part about being able to travel to these places that are not very well traveled to is that you get to see the sides of these countries that are not talked about in the media or talked about anywhere else. And very glad that we're able to see 
the size of the country that you should be able to see, as opposed to just endless gang violence and corruption and murders and kidnappings. <laughs> no, the cap is okay. We got no way. In. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what's alcohol. It's that's tea. tea. That's it's tea. tea. <laughs> it's tea. What are you talking about? Very often you'll have uh, school kids that come up up, up here in a uh, wind farm. Uh, so the kids will have uh, spend a little bit of moment here, mm -hmm. and each station that they go where the, the playgrounds are, they can have a, a little bit of fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> when the country was all safe and people will put their tents mm -hmm. all around this area and they will sleep here during the night mm -hmm. so that's uh this area here is reserved for that and yeah. it's called one love one love one love right now they kind of calm down on uh, all kind of programs that they used to do yeah. and i think uh they close now Oh, they're wow. definitely closed they just open for us but the the farm is closed since last week because of the insecurity and um, they haven't have received enough clients wow. but they're going to close for a moment now they don't know when they will be open so they're going into a semi temporary but potentially permanent closure just because of the lack of because of the insecurity that's wow. been happening um, and the security, which is right downtown area, is starting to climb up to the mountain. The unsafe situations have expanded outside of downtown and they're moving to the, the more rural areas like up here. Yes, exactly. Oh, but the good thing we have, uh, the people up in these mountains are not actually cooperating with the uh, bandits because uh -huh. what we, the type of people that we have up in these mountains are mostly farmers and people that believe in works and they just that's what they do for their living if you have a couple of people that's trying to integrate into the gang activities mm -hmm. and allow the gangs to come and resign in the area then that's when it's become a problem because what the gangs is looking for is some people in certain area that would cooperate with them yeah. and then they will reside there so that's how the gangs have been uh, very much extending themselves around port au -Prince area. But uh, these uh, gangsters, they can make people to... Uh, if you want to cooperate or not, you must or you will be killed, no? Uh, it doesn't usually work that way because... So they were saying this whole area used to be <coughs> a spot where locals and tourists would come to set up tents and enjoy the nature preserve but because of the violence and the unstable situations in this country they have unfortunately had to close that down recently and as of a week ago they are going to have to close for the foreseeable future because they don't have enough clients to come come here at all in fact the only reason we were able to get in today was because sean has connections and knows the people here so we use this uh spot here to plant mostly um uh, flowers Come on, the fuez. Fuez? Fuez is a strawberry. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's got a bigger rock now. He's, he's fast. <laughs> Don't kick it over towards me. He's fast. He's fa you know, see what he did? He just put his feet right away. Like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's nibbling me. Oh, he's smiling. <laughs> he smiled. <laughs> That is Sometimes clearer. quite the view, huh? <laughs> hey, go away. You want to get kicked by a horse? <laughs> they kick your head, you did. <laughs> <laughs> can you explain what this uh this area is again Sorry? can you explain what this area is this is where um every sunday they organize a class of yoga really here yes this uh basin here collect the water you see where the main wood where we are coming from yeah all the water that is flowing from that wood 
they come to that basin to provide water for the, the yeah. reserve yeah exactly and then also to um, water the plants that we have in the area okay that was quite amazing to see what lies outside of the very violent parts of the city but even the areas that don't look violent unfortunately are still affected very negatively by the violence because the people that work here and live here have said that they are not able to run their normal operations because of the gang violence in the area and how it's spread out from the downtown corridor in Port-au-Prince and has migrated its way up here in the mountains which I'd like to remind you all is at least a 90 minute drive from even the outskirts of Port-au-Prince. The situation, like the negative situation in Haiti with the corruption and the kidnappings and the gang activity just spreads to everywhere in this country. It's just like a disease that doesn't go away. Even though the disease may or may not go away, the people certainly won't either. The good people will still live here and hopefully be able to prosper one day. All of those, talking to Sean earlier, all of the, like the reason that a lot of the oligarchs exist is because they run a lot of the things that a government would normally run in a country that isn't a failed state. So like the customs, um, a lot of the government entities, imports, exports, they're all controlled by um, local oligarchs and that's how they profit and make all their money. They're able to live in these you know, mega mansions on the hill in the mountains is because they're, they're extorting civilians that work here and live here and leave the poor to fend for themselves working for two or three dollars a day on a good day. As we were leaving Wind Farm, we were driving back down the mountain road. We had just come up and saw tons of school-aged children, no older than 11 or 12 years old, walking up a long, steep hill wearing school clothes. So we wanted to see what their journey was like. I can ask. Excuse me. J'ai une question pour vous. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or not? Okay. It's good on your side. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, no one's gonna walk up on this side. <laughs> Try again. Come on, we. Hey, Jim, no. Qui distance nous marcher tout en bas pour nous vivre dans les arbres? Combien de minutes nous faisons pour marcher pour tout en bas pour nous vivre? Il y a des temps? One hour? Il y a des temps? Et comment on fait pour descendre? Il y a des temps. Chaque jour? Every day. Qui on sent tout? Fatigué. Very tired. Si tu as une machine, tu as une machine pour nous. One hour. One hour each way. They're very tired. Oui, mes amis. Eh bien, on fatigue, on va quitter au Kimbo, non? Et de l'eau, de l'eau, on va boire de l'eau. Je ne sais pas si tu as de l'eau. Tu as acheté de l'eau. Tu as 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 de l'eau. Ok. Merci beaucoup. Donc, tu as ton réponse. Donc, tu as ton réponse. Donc, une heure de marcher à un rythme normal est environ 4 miles. Mais si tu as de l'eau, tu as de l'eau. Donc, 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 tu as de l'eau. Jésus. And they have to do it every day. Yeah. Jesus. Said, uh, how do you feel? It's just be tired. Yeah. I thought I had a bad. I didn't have a car until I was uh, pretty much I graduated college, so I had to walk everywhere. I thought that was bad. I'm mean, like walk across town to get food, and it pales in comparison to what uh, coming down people here day. here have to go yeah. through. After spending several days in the capital, the next day we decided to take a trek outside of Port-au-Prince and into the more rural areas of this beautiful country. We took what on the map looked like a relatively short drive, only to find out the additional considerations that have to be taken here just to leave the city, resulting in our 40 mile journey taking over two and a half hours. Now let me think, which road I should take? You have to think about the roads to take here? I think I'm going that way. Let's see. I noticed with the uh, the two, at least the the very heavy gang areas that you said that we've either been in or yeah. like went by, you can tell they absolutely look like gang areas because there's no one in the streets, there's no vehicles, yeah, exactly. there's no businesses, there's no people selling anything. It's Nothing just, is happening. It's, it's just a, it's a ghost town. Yep, and uh, it's like a war zone, and nothing is happening in this area. As we we were going up the mountain yesterday, you could saw that. Um, there was an area that there was actually businesses. Yeah. All the businesses were closed. And it's very much the same thing going inside of Cité Soleil. As you could see, there was no cars going down. 
and nothing and no one's around it was uh the bare streets only that's that's the cause of the rival gang fight that is constantly happening um and this area so is a lot of the the gang violence targeted to other gangs or is it targeted a lot to innocent civilians it's that are mostly it's it's buffed if there is gang fighting of course that would relocate that will cause them to relocate themselves to other areas okay uh, but but mostly what uh, uh, provoked this kind of war, uh, gang fight is for controls also money that will provoke this kind of war and of course the um, the, the citizens in the area will have to evacuate the uh, the area as soon as the war started because they are afraid themselves that they are going to be shot. If you think that they're just living in a shoddy town, uh, not a shoddy house, lots of little houses made out of tin sheets, easily even a nine millimeters will penetrate this kind of uh, housing. 16 year old, 17 year old with a big AK-47, AR-15. How are you? from? I want to see what's a bon pour so do, finally. We say. So you're asking them if uh, it's, it's safe, safe two yeah. hours north? Yep. If there's anything in the way. Uh, Haitians are quite kind. When you ask them for information, yeah. they will provide it to you. So like every every street that we go up, you're checking with the locals no, to make sure? It, it depends on the, every some area that you reach, you just ask and make sure that the the is safe, the world is safe. Finally on the main road, huh? Yeah. Gotta get some speed going. You said you can't stop in this area? No, no. Really? Yep. What happens if you stop in this area? There's a gang area, so you don't stop, you just drive through. So if you had like a, a mechanical problem with the car, it would it would be not oh, good at all. Oh, it would be a bad, <laughs> bad thing to be happened. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, oh the popo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, popo. See now there is no. I hope we are not stuck on the way back because there was no big truck. Now. Oh, he's not stuck. We just busy. <laughs> Where are we going to now, Sean? We are heading to Sodo. It's the the part of the central plata of the country. Uh, Sodo is well known for its um, it's a shrine, the area where people uh, do the uh, ceremonies every uh, year. But it's mostly a voodoo ceremony that they do. Okay. And they, you'll find all kind of people that. Um, it comes together for this kind of ceremony. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Can you, uh, you see where we're going? <laughs> yeah, can you see? I can't see more than two feet ahead of me. Shoot. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. I think it's the first speed limit sign I've seen this whole trip. <laughs> no, they're all over the world. You didn't see them? No, I haven't seen them all. How do the people that live out here, how does the, the quality of life out here in the more rural areas? Part of point what happened is that where people could get more access to job opportunity and so on. And then that's where the airport was located, um, more government buildings are located. But in the countryside, they live more peacefully because there is no gang activities. And they're mostly farmers and uh, they are able to grow their own crops here. So it's completely different than being in port au -Prince. And um, people around this area would never want to be around port au -Prince area. They feel more comfortable living in the countryside than being in that area where there is constantly gang fight and political turmoil. Okay, this is the river where the Nepalese, the UN soldiers, drop their waste. How many people do they land here? Yep. And at the same time, they are eating. 
and I'm um, putting the hands and the mouth to cause them to catch the cholera illness. Normally, when Sean had mentioned an important historical piece about Haiti's history, or something about the current state of his country, I generally chose not to expand on it in my Haiti series, except for this one. On the afternoon of January 12, 2010, one of humanity's single deadliest natural disasters struck the already struggling and impoverished nation of Haiti. A 7.0 magnitude earthquake rocked the Haitian countryside, killing an estimated quarter of a million people. In the aftermath of this unconscionable tragedy, Various aid organizations and contingents of UN soldiers and peacekeepers from multiple nations assisted in the cleanup and rebuilding efforts, with one of those supporting nations being Nepal. Nepalese soldiers from the UN had set up a small camp in the small city of Mirabale, about 60 kilometers north of Port-au-Prince. Sometime after their arrival, locals began to come down with cholera, a previously eradicated waterborne bacterial disease with its origins tracing back to human fecal waste coming from the Nepalese camp. It took the UN over six years to admit to the world that their troops had caused the deadly outbreak in Haiti. Over 10,000 Haitians died from cholera, with more than 800,000 being infected. And it all started right where we were. Oh, yeah. So that's where the, the waste were dropping. Wow. Me bale. Hello, <laughs> David. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Monsieur. Is that your dinner or your lunch? <laughs> lunch. <laughs> no, no, that's uh, well, kinda, he always leave me food. He always gives you food. Uh, yeah, that food that I like. Uh, it was a little macaroni kind of stuff. I like it when I come here. Oh yeah. So always leave it for me. <laughs> Wheels are spinning. <laughs> I know. <laughs> After nearly two and a half hours of driving just 60 kilometers, we finally arrived in a rural but very beautiful part of Haiti. So Sean has taken us to this kind of small town up north called Soto, where they have this beautiful waterfall. One of the locals was trying to talk to me just about, oh hey, you photographer and act as a guide as well and was giving information about the place and the waterfall and everything and then Sean kind of noticed it and stepped in and was like, hey, if I needed you for something, I would call you. Da, 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 da. No, 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 I, I, I thought he was hassling you. No, no, he wasn't, he wasn't bothering me. But that's what I do, I mean, yeah. I, I don't mind telling you the story or something. Yeah. But they keep talking and talking and talking, but you got stuff to do. That's what I told them. Yeah. I said, I don't mind you tell the story. That's not my problem. Yeah. When I come somewhere, I allow the locals to do their works and I pay them something. Yeah. Because I can't come here and take your work away from you. Exactly. Even though I'm a national guy, I yeah. won't take your job away from you as a local guy. Yeah. I want you to make some money as well. Do you think that if you ever came one of the most dangerous places in the world that you'd be able to see beautiful sights like this. I definitely never thought we'd ever be able to see something like this. Are you getting some good shots? Yeah, look at it. So Sean has just hooked us up with a local contact that owns this very beautiful restaurant here and we're going to go in and have a bite to eat real quick and maybe the other guys will have a beer and we will be on our way to check out the rest of the town here. If you don't like beans, you don't like proteins. <laughs> I left with so I need proteins. Yeah. The gym? gym? Yeah. Have you been to the gym? Never? I have been, but not in Port au Prince. Oh, here? Yeah. Mostly um, materials that they gather from the US. It's all new materials. It's the same kind so of materials. They're not like handmade, right? We don't have anything in the, the gym that I go, nothing is handmade. Yeah. I know, there are some gyms yeah, where there yeah, are a lot of handmade, weight yeah. or handmade. Yeah, yeah. No. The same was in Russia previously, even sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah, handmade, because it's, it costs it. 
This is a strange assortment of food here. This goat was pretty good. Mm -hmm. yes, it is good. Sometimes it can be sweeter. Yeah. This one is not too sweet, but it's good. And really, it's really very, very healthy. If you have some digestion problem, it can help. And even if you are a little bit sick, it also can help. You really like it. Ooh, coconut. It's uh, refreshing. Yeah. It's quite refreshing. When you wake up in the morning, you have a, a good coconut water. Yeah. Mm, well refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. Cheers, my friend. Yes, cheers. Oh, so you, you open it and you eat it? You eat the insides? Yeah, yeah. sure. Oh. And you also should eat it. Mm. This uh, soft uh, substance uh, mm. becomes like more solid. Mm -hmm. So the juice disappears. Yeah, you're and right. You and yeah. you can open the coconut and uh, there is nothing to drink. Yeah, no, yeah you're right. Yeah. Oh, this half a She's trying to buy some tomatoes right now. I would like two, I don't know why she put more. Well, the more the merrier. Uh, that was for 200 goods. Okay. You can give me 100 and then I'll get the rest for me tomorrow. Next one. Another one. Oh, she wants to buy for the look. <laughs> this kind local gentleman, who had happened to be a good friend of Sean, was courteous enough to give us a tour of what a typical Haitian house looks like. Come on, this one was there. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sir. So, Sean has just pulled over in this, uh, is it neighborhood I guess you used to live in? Or you, do you used to live right here? Or like, oh, like, I live at this house. Oh, this for house. A time. Really? And then I, uh, I used to live up in the mount, uh, where you see the, um, the waterfall. Oh, wow. I stayed okay. there for oh, four months. So Sean was able to ask this guy if we'd be able to tour a local local property here, get a look at a house. La madame, le monsieur, et notre monsieur. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is their, their dining room slash kitchen area. It's dark, huh? He needs solar panel. He has electricity. No, no, he needs so. Uh, if we have solar panel, that would be way better for him. But, uh, but um, do they, they have electricity? Or okay, they have okay, okay, okay. Electricity? No, 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 electricity? No, 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 no. Yeah, but they don't give it so often. But sometimes ah. he does have it. Peter, that's where? Well, that's where. Maybe tonight. Tonight. Yeah. Yeah, they, they give the electricity, let's say, two hours or three hours per day. So, so, so it's not so very so often, yeah. yeah. Oh, they can leave that so I can put my shoes. <laughs> it's your, your yeah. shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but this okay. is a good house. Right? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. A good yeah. house. How many chambers? How? I mean, bedrooms. Oh, yeah, bedrooms. How many? Three rooms. Three, 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 uh, three uh, bedrooms. Uh -huh. So they live with their uh, kids and with their grandkids, yes. right? Yes, uh, there are currently three of them uh, living in the house for now. Can you ask if he, if he built the house or if it's, uh, yeah. like is it, is it normal for people to build their own houses or do they have like a, uh, a group of other people who like specialize in construction to build a house for them? Yes, no, they have to build it their own. He, so he built, he built everything here himself? Yes, wow. yes, and how many years ago? How, how old is this house? Oh, Kaim goes through the Demilitarized. Demilitarized. 2013? Yeah, they started in 2013, but the house is not have it finished yet. If they decided, for example, to sell this house, more or less, how much it will cost? 600 mil. 600 mil. Uh, I say. Oh, yeah, I say. 600 mil. Oh, yeah. Uh, 500,000 Haitian dollars. Yeah, so three, uh, 3 million gourd? Uh, oh, no, uh, two, two and a half million gourd. So 15,600 USD is your answer. We what is it? They, they are, are going moving? to no, move they, to build another yes, house? Yes. Oh, 
Okay. This is an. Yeah. Oh, that's the the yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so everything everything this way is not his. This is not his. This is how you would know his land. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Now. Same we do in Russia. How much? Uh, how many more years or how much more time would he expect it um, to finish the house? Uh, it's like he will be able to answer that question. A man without a job and doesn't know how much this comes. Yeah, because a person who doesn't have jobs and who doesn't have an income and he doesn't know how much that he's getting in every month. So that would be a difficult question okay. for him to you answer. To because think about it, he started it and then he started in 2013. Yeah. And then now it's already what? 10 yeah, years? 10 years. That's something he should have been finished by five years or so if he was actually working. <laughs> what about his voice, his kids, uh, so they don't live with him, but where do they live? In such a small village, in this village, maybe? In no, they, 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 they are in Mexico. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, they left, they went to Chile, and oh, so they, they're they just trying to reach to uh, go to the U.S. So this, uh -huh. He walked from Chile to Mexico? And to Rural Forest. Not you heard of the migrant? The yeah. migration? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> okay. from, from yeah they, you have them coming from Brazil, yep. Chile, yeah. and they walk by foot to Mexico, and then on the way to Mexico trying to make it to the U.S. So his son went through the, the same thing. He make it to uh, Mexico in one month, walking. From what place? He went to Chile? Chile. From Chile. I don't believe this. Where is uh, so his son that went to Mexico? Where is uh, where is he now? He's still in Mexico. Oh, he's still in Mexico. Yeah, he, he just got to Mexico. Oh, he did. Yeah. Okay. So it's that's how it's all been happening. So they go to uh, uh, Brazil, Chile, mm -hmm. and then from Chile, they, you know, they took transborder, you know until they make it to Mexico. When they go to Mexico, they're going to give them a lot of paper again. And from then, they will try to make it to the U.S. as soon as possible. Yeah, but it, it's not difficult yeah. to get from Mexico to the uh, U.S. You suffer a lot. It was quite difficult. Uh, you know, a lot of people died in the forest. F from uh, details that we gathered, there are so some of them. Uh, a lot of the women's are being raped, and uh -huh. so are the men's. And um, they have to pay a lot of ransom to some gang members in the forest. So it's. Uh, I don't think it's been uh, quite an easy journey for them, crossing from this country to Mexico and then make it to the U.S. Does he? expect to is he going to see his sons again or does he <laughs> no we got this asking for directions again no i wanted to get uh i wanted to take you to a place but i forgot where it was located oh. you know the time when jesus died oh, okay what you call the calvary yeah they take him to uh different stations Okay. Here we are. We are here. Sean is taking us to a uh, a local religious place. Is that what it is? Station of the Cross. Station of the Cross. Yes. So what they would do? They will light the fire, um, the candle here, and then they will make their uh, demands toward the spirits. So that's basically what it is. So this uh, this lady behind me that's rolling down, or just finished rolling down, was uh, I guess involved in a voodoo ceremony where the uh, the other woman that was in the gray dress and blue hat was helping her do some voodoo. The voodoo woman was you know, singing or kind of loudly. You know, exclaiming some words and other things. It's a very interesting place. This is it's such an interesting country. So that was a lady that was sick, and then she went to seek uh, her help, 
to support her, to pray with her, and then she will, after, feel uh, completely different after this ceremony that she just had with her. So it's kind of like a healing ceremony? Si don't, si don't ceremony de prison, yeah, that's for Maybe healing. Because uh, she's sick, she's suffering, and then she comes here to ask for uh, healing. Oh, okay. And she will find the healing. She will be healed. Wow. She's healing hands. We love Shinkey, Okay. Merci, madame. Merci beaucoup. He's gotta like yeah. shit the deck like right in the middle of the road. <laughs> Hit the car? Huh? Is he gonna hit your car? No. He's really close. <laughs> what are they slipping? No? I know. Oh, uh. No. No. Are people killed here often from a. Uh, <coughs> accident? Like we saw the first time? Like first no, day? No? no, really, no. <coughs> really? No. That doesn't <coughs> happen often. Not often that you would see a person get hit by a car, but there is not, you know, it's the cars are not going very fast, and um, that guy got hit by a car, but I don't know how that happened. That's the thing in Haiti. There's always place in the top top. Yes, there is still place. There's still. How do you say there's room in there? Oh yeah. <laughs> you wanna get in then? No, I don't wanna try it. I'll have you sit in someone laps. <laughs> well, I'd rather go on the roof. <laughs> There's always space <laughs> in a top top. The one word for this, for this road, for all this, it's bestias. In the next and final video of my Haiti series, we try to find an old abandoned military fortress hidden away in the mountains of Haiti for hundreds of years. Look at all these cannons! They stockpiled this massive amount of cannonballs that you saw outside. Thousands of them there. Thousands and thousands and thousands. All different sizes, small, medium, large, huge ones. So if everything goes like this, uh, it's awful roads, 